BPA free. If you'd bought any reusable plastic bottle or food container in recent years, you'd have come across this label. Several viewers have asked Talking Point to take a closer look at the label. What does BPA free mean? Is it really safer? So because you asked, I'm going to investigate it for you. To know what BPA free means, we first need to know what's BPA, which is short for bisphenol A. Dr. Ben Ng has spent the past 15 years studying how our diet and lifestyle can affect our hormones and our health. So Ben, what are all these things? Well, Stephen, what do you think all of these things have in common? Uh, I don't know. I mean, some are food, some are toys, clothes. Many of these are common household items. Okay. And many things similar to this contain BPA. So there's BPA in all of these items? Yes, in fact, I'll ask you one thing, Stephen. Look at your phone now. Yeah. Yeah, unless uh, I can almost assure you many of your phone covers and, uh, contain BPA as well. Oh, because, well, yeah, this one, it's plastic. It's made of plastic, right? Absolutely. I imagine there will be BPA. But, Absolutely right. But to tell me there's BPA in, in the toys, okay, there's some plastic, but in clothes? Yes, I think a lot of us take for granted the amount of the usage of BPA. We know it's very commonly found in plastics, but it makes uh -huh. a lot of things stronger. So things like your sports clothing, it makes it stronger and it, it prevents rusting as well. So you find a huge use of BPA in wow. all your common products. Wow, and even, was this just left here by mistake or even receipts? <laughs> Thermal paper. Thermal paper ah. has a bit of BPA as well. So what exactly is BPA? BPA is a chemical product produced in billions of kilograms every year and is found in multiple household items. The most important function is to strengthen polycarbonate of plastics. Now the question is, is it dangerous for us? BPA, can it be dangerous? Yes, it can but in large quantities. I know we have it in so many household items and so forth, but the amount of exposure we have is much, much smaller. Okay. However, the concern obviously in the long term, will that have any effect at all? Okay. So that's the worry that we have, especially in children, you know, when they are yeah. young and so forth, the concern that BPA is an endocrine disruptor. To simply put, they are chemicals that can actually mimic certain hormones, Okay. or block certain hormones. Okay. And we know in children, where they are growing and, uh, and they're developing and so forth, we are worried that these things, long-term exposure can affect that kind of growth. So you're saying it could affect their growth patterns and maybe mess up something inside the body? I mean, with anything, over a long, uh, long-term period, that's the general concern that we have. What will it actually affect right. our health? So where does most of our exposure to BPA come from? More than 90% of our exposure to BPA comes from ingestion. Okay. So a lot of it, we eat them. We use plastic containers all the time. You That's get right. that kind of exposure and ultimately, potentially could get into your mouth and into your system. If there is that possibility of it leaching in, into us, then, then why don't we ban it? I, I know some countries have actually done that. I think some countries have controlled the usage of BPA and especially in children's uh, yeah. bottles and so forth. But I think the, we have to be very, very clear about this, Stephen. We, at the moment, Singapore has nothing definitive. BPA is used to make polycarbonate a hard, shiny plastic that has the look and feel of glass, but it's light and nearly unbreakable. They are used in some food containers and drink bottles. Singapore food regulations state that all food containers sold here must not migrate any harmful substances into the food. But there is no specific ban on BPA. In 2008 though, BPA made international news headlines when Canada declared it a toxic chemical and banned it in baby bottles. Scientists believe the endocrine disruptor could harm the reproductive system, causing infertility and cancer. Shortly after, BPA-free products started flooding the market. Nearly all reusable plastic bottles and food containers today say they are BPA-free. But if there's no BPA in these bottles, how are they made? I've arranged to meet plastic scientist Tong Yen Hua. So BPA is this molecule that we okay, have here, that's what it looks like. so uh, called bisphenol A. BPA-free bottles basically replace this BPA with some alternative. Like how? 
Uh, one alternative is very simple. They actually just remove some of these atoms. This is a carbon with three hydrogens and replacing it with just one hydrogen itself. So this then becomes BPF. And are there other alternatives? Yes. BPA, uh, there are two rings here. So we can take out this middle part. And we attach uh, sulfur to it, for example. BP, what is this now? This is BPS. Actually, not too much has really changed, right? As you can see, it's only the middle part yeah. here that's changed. It is these two side structures here that enable the plastic to be formed, and uh, it is th the end here that reacts to form the plastic bottles. Biologically, it is actually these two parts here that has the potential effect for human health. So it is kind of like cheating, where you have a, a dangerous molecule replaced with a different molecule and that's unknown. Is it actually safer? For now, we don't know. Some preliminary studies have shown some effect, but uh, it's not fully verified. So is it possible that we're still consuming some of these bisphenols even in these uh, BPA-free replacements? Yes. The bottles made with BPA replacements like BPS or BPF, some of these bisphenol type compounds could still leach into the drinking water uh, and we could be drinking it. Bisphenol substitutes may be just as harmful as BPA. So if that's the case, I want to find out if BPA free bottles sold in Singapore leach. And if so, just how much of these bisphenol substitutes are they leaching? I'm gathering 11 reusable bottles from a variety of brands, all claim to be BPA-free. Two of them claim to be food-grade, which means they are safe for us to store our food in. I've also added stainless steel and glass water bottles into the mix as controls. They're going to a lab to be tested for whether or not they leach bisphenols. Reusable water bottles are commonly made of three kinds of plastic. Polycarbonate, hard and clear. Triton, also hard and clear. And polypropylene, translucent and a bit squeezy. There's also stainless steel and glass. I've sent 11 bottles to a lab, all brand new. Nine have the BPA-free label. Two of the bottles don't have a BPA-free label, but they are labelled food grade, which means they are safe for food storage. I'm sending all the bottles to a lab to find out if they are leaching any potentially harmful chemicals. Leaching happens once you put the water into the water bottle and some of the bisphenols in the plastic bottles can come into the, the water that you'll be drinking. We're filling the bottles with uh, room temperature and hot water for two hours, and then we are analyzing how much of the bisphenols are leaching into the water. So what did the results tell us? So we right. found bisphenol S, which is the one that we found it at higher concentrations. Okay. But we also found minute or smaller concentrations of bisphenol AF and bisphenol AP. So in terms of leaching, okay, the highest yeah. was about 70 to 80, the lowest? Maybe what around is? 10 to, to 20 nanograms per liter, yeah. 70 to 80 nanograms, what does that actually mean? The concentrations are really minute. Parts per trillion or nanograms per liter, which are the concentrations that we see here, will be equivalent to one drop in 16 swimming uh, pools. This here says it's between 70 and 80. That would be like what? 70 drops in 16 Olympic size swimming pools. Yes, correct. Okay. If you think about it, it's really small. So one of these bottles, uh, it actually comes with a tea strainer. So we just took a tea kettle and we boiled the water and put it inside the, the bottles. When we test it with the hot water yeah. for two hours, we actually see the number almost quadrupling for some of the polycarbonate oh, bottles. Three times uh, more? Yeah, three times, four times, depending on the, the brand wow. of the bottle. So that's quite significant. Wow, okay. Yeah. But then again, I mean, most of us would probably not really pour hot water into a plastic bottle. Right? Um, ideally, you wouldn't, uh, but as you can see here, some of those uh, bottles okay. seem to induce you to that option. Uh, it's possible 
but you're saying the basically the plastic does react to different temperatures. Yes. And the warmer it is, it tends to leach more. Yes, correct. Earlier in the test, we were looking at about 70 to 80 nanograms, right? Now yes. it's over 300. Is that something I need to worry about? So in perspective, it's still very, very small. Okay. So if you're dropping 350 drops in 16 Olympic pools, very minute concentrations. But some of the alternatives that we see here don't leach anything that we can see with the current instrumentations. The lab results show that out of the bottles tested, four leach varying amounts of replacement BPA chemicals. Essentially, BPS, BPAF, and BPAP. The highest amount was 80 nanograms per litre of BPS, which, if you recall, stands for bisphenol S. That came out of a BPA-free bottle made of a plastic called polycarbonate when room temperature water was stored. The bottles, which were labelled food grade, also leached the same replacement bisphenol chemicals. These food grade bottles are also made of polycarbonate. The fourth bottle, made of polypropylene, only leach minute amounts of BPAP. The bottles made of stainless steel, glass and a plastic called Triton showed no leaching of any bisphenols. To find out if minute levels of BPA replacement chemicals will affect our body, I've asked the lab to do another test. We'll take those leach chemicals from the four bottles and test it, this time on a human cell. So we're using human cells in a petri dish and we're exposing those cells to the water to see if we have any estrogenic effects or any general couch effects. So Prof, I'm eager to find out what the results are for the cell test. Can you tell me? Our lab test shows that 4 out of the 11 reusable bottles leach small amounts of BPS, BPAF or BPAP, chemicals that are very similar to BPA. The bottles that leached the most were made of polycarbonate, a hard and clear plastic. This bottle leached the most, 80 nanograms of BPS per litre of room temperature water. What does a nanogram look like? Well, this is a drop of water. Now imagine a drop that is more than a millionth the size of this. That is a nanogram. Doesn't look like much, right? So I've asked the lab to test the highest amount of chemicals we found. That is 80 nanograms of BPS per litre from room temperature water on a human cell to see if there's any impact. Leading the lab investigation is Professor Shane Snyder. So Professor, I'm eager to find out what the results are for the cell test. Can you tell me? Interestingly, when we looked at cell death, that is just killing the cells outright, uh -huh. we really didn't see any effect. So oh. there was nothing toxic enough to just kill the human cells alone. Which is a good thing, right? It's a very good thing. Okay, but I feel like there's a but coming on. <laughs> there is. So we looked a little deeper at the human genetics yeah. and particularly how these chemicals affect estrogen because bisphenol A yep. was originally a problem because of its ability to mimic human estrogen. So right. we did see some of that kind of effect in our test. What we found is it's also happening with some of the analogs or BPA replacement. BPS. Exactly. BPF, things like that, right? Correct. We understand there is leaching, so now this enters our body. Exactly right. Wow. But again, at these concentrations, probably quite low, but something to be considered. Inside the human cell, we can see that there's enough of the chemicals present to begin to activate that estrogen receptor system. In other words, the cells are responding to the estrogens from the chemicals that leach from the bottle. But at very, very minute amounts, you'd have to drink from a lot of bottles to have an effect based on what we see so okay. far. For instance, we have this marked as one bottle of water, two, four, or eight. So we actually don't really see an effect with just one bottle to drink it. Okay. But if you drank two, we begin to see some level of estrogen effect. And at 
eight bottles, we get to see a quite significant amount of estrogen effect. That means drinking eight times the amount of water from the bottle that leach 18 nanograms of BPS per litre will have a significant estrogenic effect. Our lab test shows that BPA's chemical replacement is doing the same thing as BPA, mimicking estrogen when exposed to human cells. When we drink water laced with these chemicals, what could they potentially do to our bodies? I'm dialing into someone based in the United States. Abigail Davidson has spent years following the research and writing about environmental toxins in our homes. So the conventional wisdom when it comes to toxicology is that the dose makes the poison. Mm. And when it comes to most things, that is true. But what they have found in the last 25-ish years is that when it comes to endocrine disrupting chemicals specifically, and that includes BPA, mm -hmm. these don't always follow that typical belief system of the dose makes the poison. Oh. So it kind of takes a more um, unpredictable curve. So that means that when we are exposed to even low doses of endocrine mm -hmm. disruptors, that can still have an effect. What does current research tell us about bisphenols? The fact that, that BPA is an endocrine disruptor is not controversial or really debated anymore. There have been thousands of studies, you know, animal studies as well as those human correlational studies that have found links to various types of, you know, factors that influence fertility. If you mention animal studies, people will say, but that's not people. They're not the same thing. So would you say there be, has, has been enough research on humans itself to justify this as well? It's a great question. I think that, it, you know, it comes down to opinion at the end of the day on whether or not you think that the animal studies are sufficient. I think that when you add all of the puzzle pieces together, the fact that you have thousands of animal studies, you have thousands of human correlational studies, to me, that's enough. So and when it comes to fertility in women, um, they have found that BPA exposure is linked with high risk of miscarriage. They have found um, lower egg quality, like in women who are going through IVF. And if you already have a predisposition to breast cancer, like through genetics or something, then exposure to BPA might increase your risk or it might increase the severity of your cancer. In men, they're looking at um, correlations between BPA and lower sperm count. So would you say that's the same thing for the other bisphenols? Yes, there's not as much research done on BPA's cousins like BPS and BPF, but since they did start studying it, most of the information is consistent with the results from BPA. The chemical structures are so similar that they're gonna have similar effects in the bodies. The good news is that bisphenols half-life is pretty short. It's about six hours, which means that if you do start trying to reduce your exposure, you can really make a difference pretty quickly. Half-life means the time needed for a substance to halve its starting dose in the body. In the case of bisphenols like BPA and its replacements, studies show that it has a half-life of about six hours, meaning the chemical could be completely eliminated from the body within a day. Would you say there's a, a safer kind of plastic out there that we should be using? So there's a newer kind of plastic called Triton. It's manufactured by a company called Eastman. We definitely need more research on this Triton plastic. However, I still believe that it is most likely much safer than your more conventional polycarbonate that has the BPA cousins like BPS and BPF. A safer plastic with no bisphenols at all. Those bottles were sent to the lab. Some of them were made of Triton. If you recall, our test showed no leaching at all from these bottles. How is this breed of plastic made? 
Nelgene is one of the world's leading bottle manufacturers and it uses Triton. I'm meeting its exclusive distributor in Singapore to unpack this material, which has been called the Rolls Royce of plastic because of its high price point. Triton is a core polyester plastic that uh, they will love as a safe alternative to polycarbonate that uh, the usual plastic bottle that we have. Mm -hmm. So they share the same characteristics such as its clarity, then its durability and the uh, resistant impact, but not the BPA. When did you all start selling these Triton bottles? We started selling it uh, around 2009. Mm -hmm. Like after Canada Health, they declared that uh, BPA is actually uh, toxic to human health back in 2008. So if Triton is so safe, why not use it for all plastic bottles? So there are actually various of material available in the market. So factors like cost will affect the customer choices for their preference of a water bottle. There are so many bottles and they all look the same. How can I tell whether it has Triton or not? Some of the water bottles have the Triton plastic indicated. Whereas for other brands like Nalgene or this, they will actually only uh, stated like BPA free label. But if you need more detail, you can actually verify it from its uh, website or online. So consumers should aware of what they are buying and also do their own due diligence. We put 11 BPA-free and food-grade drinking bottles to the test. Now, four of them leach BPA replacement chemicals, specifically BPS, BPAP and BPAF. The amounts leached, though minute, was enough for some of the experts I spoke with to raise concerns. So while we can limit our exposure to these chemicals, I think we also need to alert the authorities to it, which is why I'm sending our test results to the Singapore Food Agency, which governs food safety here.